and to highlight the change we have on board Dr. Hari Rama K. Acharya, Clinical Director and Senior Consultant Neurologist from Narayana Health City. Let's put our hands together for Dr. Hari Rama K. Acharya. Let me give you a little bit of background here. Now, I am part of a, an organization called Vidya Poshaka Sangha in my district. Now, this is a, an organization which is actually identifying the poorest of the poor children in my district. And every year, this year, for example, we have about 200 students there who are all economically backward people who do not have any access to any of the education whatsoever. So I'm proud to say that I'm sponsoring 20 of those children. Now, you know, there are a lot of sponsors involved in that, and it gives me so much a pleasure, and it's a privilege to be actually helping to be a mentor and inspiration for those children. And this, you know, as I told before, you know, I come from a modest beginning in the beginning, you know, and I achieved whatever I had to. I was in UK for seven years. I was in the United States for 16 years and all that, and I came back here in 2011. Since that time, I have been part of this organization, Vidya Poshaka Sangha. Now, when I speak to these poor students, quite a lot of those poor students actually want to become doctors themselves. Now, do they have the opportunity to go to a medical college in this country? Unfortunately, the reality is, suppose if they have to go to a private medical institution, they have to pay at least 50 lakhs, sometimes 2 crores for a medical seat, which is sold at medical colleges. Now, I'm told it costs about 500 crores to start a medical college. When somebody is investing that much of money, of course, he wants a return for his investment. But these poor children who are the brightest and the dynamic people with a fire in their belly and those who want to do something for the, in their education, in their life, with a lot of ambitions in them, they do not have any opportunity to get the medical education at all. Now, we are still stuck in the old medical education system in this country where they are the medical colleges with huge buildings and 400 to 500 teachers training 200 students. Now, this is such a waste of money in this day and age when we have the digital media, when we have web-based web training programs available all over the country. It is such an easy thing to educate these poor children as medical doctors. Now, I have identified about 20 students in my own district who came to talk to me. And they asked me, doctor, you know, I want to become a doctor like you, and what can, how can I do? But I can't go through this system, how can I do? And what I thought of doing was, you know, you know, we have got five medical colleges in my own district. We have about 10 government college, government hospital, reasonably well equipped government hospital. If one or two students can join free these medical institutions, they work there from nine to five, not learning some theory or something like that, but moving around with the specialists in that, those hospitals, six months rotation in different fields of the medicine, and they get exposure to clinical medicine every single day there. So, you know, three months they can work in medicine, three months they can work in surgery, three, three months they can work in different branches of medicine. So nine to five, they are exposed with this consultant, with the specialist, taking care of the patient without paying much at all. They don't have to pay anything at all. We have so many hospitals available. Now, in the evening time, how can they study medicine? Well, we can create a, a media-based, web-based training program for them. You know, we have to have a national panel of teachers. There are outstanding teachers available who are waiting for an opportunity to teach a web-based teaching program. Identify, for example, 10 neurologists, 10 cardiologists, 10 gastroenterologists across the country. About thousand teachers in different branches of medicine, they can create videos of the teaching programs and which can be available in the web site for these students to study in the evening hours. Once they finish their clinical training in the hospital, they go to their homes in the evening with a computer, open the internet and access the teaching programs that are available for them and they can understand every facet of medicine. These are not dull boys or dull girls, these are excellent people with the potential to learn all these things sitting at home rather than sitting in a medical college listening to boring lectures which I had to do unfortunately. You know, quite a lot of the teachers don't know how to teach 
and very few of them I can count the really good teachers I have had in medical college at the tip of my finger. The rest of the time I thought I'm wasting my time here. So instead of that you identify the really good teachers, create a web-based program and these programs are available for these bright students to study at any time for example in the evening and let them learn at their own pace and it is a patient-based patient-centered study they are going to do. Four years of training, five years of training, they can become excellent physicians, no doubt about that at all. So that is one technological innovation we can create and change the medical system, education system in this country and help these poor, bright students and so that in about 10 years time or 15 years time, we will have enough number of doctors available even in the remote rural areas to help the patients there and get their care, number one. Now, number two, another technological innovation, for example, we have started in my organization called Narayana Hridayalaya, now it is called Narayana Health City. My chairman, Devi Shetty, has collaborated with the um, IT giant Cisco. What we have started doing, for example, is telemedicine system. What exactly this is, is, you know, there are the rural healthcare clinics, some of them are affiliated to Narayana Hridayalaya, some of them are outside rural clinics and all that. And I used to go there once every month to see the poor patients in those areas. Now, we have, in, in sort of, we have introduced a system there where all they have got in the rural clinic is a primary physician, and in the, they have a computer and they have got a camera and the patient, poorest of the poor patient, 400 or 500 kilometers away, sitting there wanting to see a specialist and this primary physician talks to that poor patient, finds out what the patient's problem is and I am seeing as the primary physician is interrogating, taking the history and examining the patient, I am seeing what exactly is happening to the patient 400 kilometers or 400 miles away and I can advise the primary physician sitting there in the rural clinic what kind of course of action he needs to take. So the patient then I may say that okay doctor you know do this investigation and ask the patient to come back tomorrow at this specific time and I will be available to advise you what kind of treatment you can give to the patient. So the patient doesn't have to travel, the poor patient doesn't have to waste his money and time traveling all that distance. He can be there sitting in a rural, in his own village, in the rural clinic, and he will be, I will be addressing his neurological for ex problem, for example, and advising the primary physician what kind of treatment can be given. And one month later, I can call the same patient to come to the same clinic and tell the primary physician, now this is what is happening, do this. Or if I need to see the patient, I can tell them, well, you can send the patient to me for one visit so that I can make a future course of action for the treatment. This is telemedicine, simple telemedicine we can do. In United States, for example, you know, we, I, in the university where I was working, when I was on call, I am sitting in my office, there are so many smaller rural hospitals there, patient comes to the emergency room, for example, with acute stroke. And at that time, as soon as the patient comes there, system is activated where immediately I'm informed that there is a patient with stroke sitting there in the emergency room 200 kilometers away. So immediately, I go on the computer, I can see the patient, I can tell the emergency room physician there that, okay, doctor, get this done for the patient. What exactly is the symptom of the patient? Everything. I tell the patient, doctor, do this, do this, do this. And send the patient for CT scan. Within 5 to 10 minutes, CT scan is done. Patient comes back and the report is available in my computer, sitting in my office, 200 kilometers away. And I tell the doctor, doctor, now give this injection for the patient right away and then transfer the patient to my hospital. And believe it or not, so many times the patient with a really bad stroke, who has paralysis, who has speech difficulty, could not even speak a single word when he came to the emergency room, by the time he comes to my hospital, after receiving the right there in the emergency room, receiving the injection, you know, so-called clot buster, I'm sure quite a few of you are familiar with that. By the time they come to the hospital, their paralysis sometimes is gone, their speech has improved enormously rather than having a patient ending up for the rest of the life with a severe paralysis on one side of the body and not able to speak, here we have got a patient coming to our institution for further treatment who has become almost normal. This is what the telemedicine can do. If United States can do it, we can do it. Every hospital, every rural village, every small center in the country, we can in involve the technological 
innovations, digital media, everything is available in this country. Let us make it happen so that we can have a bright, optimistic future for the poor people of this country. Let us also have a better, bright future for the poor students of this country who really want to serve the people as best as they can. Let us make life better for them. Thank you. That's all I've got to say. Thank you so much. We move further to the next award category among best neurologist of South India. The award goes to Dr. Hari Rama K. Acharya.